What's going on guys? So I just filled the truck up with diesel fuel and uh, I know a lot of you guys in different parts of the country have some really, really expensive diesel fuel. It's right at $3.99 a gallon here today. I don't know, you know how that compares to other parts of the country, but yeah, uh, top the truck off. Let's go ahead and start up. We are going on another relatively, I'm not going to say a long drive, but it's another drive today. Total trip today is, again, going to be right at about 300 miles, which is really good. We're actually heading down to Brownsville, Texas. So Brownsville, Texas is right on the southern border of Texas. It's, it's actually the furthest tip south of Texas that you can get before you get into Mexico. It's actually a beautiful city, too. The food is absolutely amazing. The culture is really nice there. The people are extremely friendly. And uh, we're gonna see what kind of fuel economy we get now, considering a few different variables than last time. First of all, the truck now has a tonneau cover on the back of it. So it has a Pace Edwards Jackrabbit, a hard retractable tonneau cover. And that tonneau cover is gonna change things up a little bit, possibly in terms of aerodynamics. Uh, there are all sorts of videos and TV shows and everything that have gone over the pros and cons of using a tonneau cover. I know Mythbusters uh, many, many years ago did a fuel economy test to see how it would impact fuel economy. And they came to the conclusion that the manufacturers actually engineer the bed of the truck to create a bubble that wind actually goes over and it deflects it away from the truck. So you get better fuel economy without a bed cover. When um, a lot of online reviewers have also done a similar test, they've gotten mixed results. Some folks say a bed cover actually helps the truck, some folks say it hurts it. I think some of those variables could change over time as trucks in themselves change their overall uh, wind coefficient, how the truck actually handles wind when it's, when it's traveling. So it's gonna be interesting to see. Now I know a lot of folks uh, expect me to do calculated math on this, which I could and I probably will in future videos, but I think most people want to hope that they can trust the actual MPG meter that's on the truck itself. So for the sake of repeating the last test and kind of doing it in the same manner, we're going to go by the actual dash gauge and see specifically what type of fuel economy we get based on the truck's computer versus actually uh, calculating the math myself. Um, in future trips, I'm gonna actually do math calculation and determine exactly based on how much fuel I put into the truck. But even then, you can be off slightly because uh, you have to also figure out how fuel pumps are calibrated, when they actually click stop pumping, and how much more space you have in your fuel tank before you completely fill it up. A lot of people will stand there for another 20, 30 seconds just clicking the fuel nozzle, trying to get every last drop they can into their tank until it overflows. And unless you do that, unfortunately, you really don't have a exact measurement of how much fuel was in the truck or the vehicle from one trip to another. Unless you actually know precisely where the fuel filled up inside of that fuel tank. Because let's say you're able to fit a quarter gallon more fuel at one fuel stop than another, well, that quarter gallon can equate to quite a few more miles of driving, and it can definitely alter the math when it comes to calculating how much fuel you put in your truck, unless you go to the same fuel station every single time to refill it so you can be sure that that specific machine is calibrated exactly the same every time. But even then, uh, based on the, the fizzling and the, the suds of the, the fuel as you fill up, it can throw things off. So you really have to let the diesel fuel settle so there's no bubbles that can throw off the actual, uh, the actual nozzle. So it's not exactly a precise science any way you cut it unless you know exactly how much fuel you're putting in your vehicle and exactly how much fuel is remaining in your vehicle and where it ends. So yeah, there's a lot to it. That's why for the sake of this trip, I'm gonna repeat it the same way I did it on the last trip and just use the, the dash meter to tell me what, what type of fuel economy I'm getting. Right now the range, uh, I've been mainly doing city driving, it's at 532 miles, and uh, it's probably gonna start going up from there, so the range will increase, simply because the longer the trip I'm on, it's gonna be recalibrating itself to account for the fact that I'm now getting better MPGs because I'm going faster and I'm not in stop and go traffic. 
but this is going to be uh, another video on fuel economy so let's see how it does with the tonneau cover and now that we've passed that magical thousand mile break-in period we are at 1149 miles on the odometer and uh, i've put the vast majority of those miles on the truck in the last week Okay, so I know in the last video, a lot of folks said that my speed was kind of all over the place, and there's a reason for that. Uh, there's a lot of construction zones on Texas roads, and you have to change your speed a lot as you go through towns, as you pass through school zones in different areas between towns. Texas is still mainly comprised of a lot of private land as well as a lot of small cities and towns that you're constantly adjusting your speed on. And because these roads that I'm on are not interstates, uh, you run into the scenario as well that you could absolutely have to go down in speed to go through just, again, a small town or just an area that has reduced speed. Uh, all the roads I'm traveling on, again, they're not actually interstates except a road that's being converted into an interstate, but it's not quite there yet. So yeah, there's a lot of areas where you can't just maintain the exact speed the entire time. That said, um, I am trying to use cruise control as much as possible, and I'm using adaptive cruise control as well, so it's going to adapt to slower traffic in front of me, and then speed back up if, uh, if that traffic speeds up or if it clears. And I should be able to try to maintain a relatively consistent speed. For the most part, the speeds on this trip will be 70 or 75 miles an hour, depending on the area that I'm at. And then once I get closer to populated areas, the speed will likely drop down to 65 miles per hour. So very similar to the last trip. The distances between uh, where I'm traveling are almost identical. So there's not going to be a lot of variance there. At the end of the day, if the total trip length is roughly 300 miles, then I think we'll be able to replicate the scenario from last time pretty dang well. So again, we're going to try to maintain between 70, 75, and 65, depending on the speed limits of the areas that we're in. And I am using the heads-up display as well, which is really convenient. I've actually grown to really appreciate heads-up display because it just projects it right there in your path and uh, it makes it very, very easy to see how fast you're traveling. Okay, so we have traveled 46.1 miles. Average fuel economy a little lower than last time, 26.7 miles per gallon, according to the computer in the vehicle. We've traveled uh, a little more than 46 minutes. So yeah, fuel economy is uh, a little different. It is creeping up a little bit now, but the uh, range is definitely creeping up. Um, it's only crept up since we've taken off on this trip. I believe it was like 530 something miles uh, till empty, now it's 560 miles. So hopefully it, uh, it keeps going up. But yeah, we're, uh, we're making good time. Again, we've traveled 47 miles since I filled up and we're getting 20, actually 26.9 miles per gallon according to the uh, the computer here in the vehicle so we still have about 100 miles left to go and uh, yeah when, once we get a little closer I'll check back in okay so we have now traveled 83.5 miles average fuel economy for this trip is 28.8 miles per gallon significantly better than last time I uh, don't know if that's because of the extra thousand miles roughly that we've put on this truck since getting it or if it's because of the tonneau cover not sure uh, average fuel economy for the truck check that out 33.7 miles per gallon 33.7 miles per gallon i'm on cruise control right now you can see the heads up display right up here and it's on adaptive cruise control but i'm pretty much staying at 76 75 miles per hour but yeah, look at those numbers. Those numbers are absolutely crazy. At least for a truck. Uh, you know, there's a lot of cars out there, especially economy vehicles, that can easily surpass the fuel economy numbers of this truck. But for a full-size truck capable of hauling, you know, 8,800 pounds, 1,400 pounds of cargo capacity, or 1,500 pounds roughly in the middle there, you know, to be getting... 28.8 miles per gallon is an average for this trip. So far, traveled 85 miles. But to have an average fuel economy for the truck of 33.9 miles per gallon is insane. And look at that. We're about to hit 29 miles per gallon on this truck. And what's funny is that when we started the trip, the range on this truck was like 530-something miles. And now we're at 585 miles remaining 
which means it's constantly adjusting and calibrating for the fact that we're on a longer trip that uses less fuel, at least less miles per gallon, and it's giving us a much greater range. So the range has constantly been creeping up. The fuel economy numbers have constantly been cre creeping up, and the distance we traveled has also gone up. Now, I know there's some folks out there who are going to say that you know, from a fuel level perspective, because if you look at the fuel gauge right here, you'll see that it hasn't moved at all. It's still on a full tank, and we've traveled 86.2 miles. A lot of people are going to say, well, that's kind of normal, right? A lot of vehicles, you don't see a big drop in the range until you've really, really traveled a far distance. But I'm going to dispute that with the fact that most vehicles, uh, at least modern vehicles, have a range of about 350 miles. You know, if you get a pickup truck with an extra large fuel tank, or if you get a hybrid vehicle, or if you get a fully electric vehicle, of course, those numbers are all going to be different. But for a full-size pickup truck to have traveled, you know, roughly 87 miles with this type of fuel economy to show absolutely no drop at all in your fuel tank, you know, at least your, your gas gauge, and to have a range so far going up 583 miles, clearly shows the type of fuel economy this truck is getting. Because again, if most vehicles get between 350 to maybe 400 miles range on the highway and about 250 to 300 miles range in the city, well, this truck is clearly, clearly doing much better than that average. Part of it is because of the, the fuel tank. I believe this truck has a 24 gallon fuel tank. But when you couple a, you know, a good sized fuel tank with a really good fuel economy, you know, that, that makes all the difference in the world when it comes to your overall range. It's going to be really interesting to see what uh, what the fuel looks like whenever we finish this trip, or even whenever we make it down to Brownsville. Okay, welcome back. So we have now traveled 129 miles. Average fuel economy for this trip is 29.4 miles per gallon. So we are creeping up significantly higher than the previous trip that I, I recorded for you all. At the time, the truck had, I think, 360-something miles on it. Uh, now the truck has 1,277 miles. Um, the average fuel economy for the truck is 30.7. So 30.7 for the truck, 29.5 for the trip. Um, that's pretty phenomenal, to be honest. It's, uh, it's doing pretty good. Like I said, 130-mile trip. I know this isn't a cross-country trip, but it's certainly a long enough trip to be able to gauge the fuel economy and see how this thing performs on the highway. But yeah, so i got to be honest with you, this truck keeps surprising me in a positive way. Now, from a seat comfort perspective, you know, i got to tell you, it feels a little bit more comfortable on this trip than it did the previous trip. But I did let out the lumbar a little bit before I had it inflated a bit and it was pushing towards the bottom of my back which is how I typically like it but I deflated it a bit and it's uh it actually feels a little bit more comfortable because I feel like I'm able to utilize the seats cushioning a little bit more if that makes sense um aside from that you know the trip's been really non-eventful I don't feel achy or anything I don't feel like uh like I'm overly exhausted or tired, even though I know it's only 130 miles. But, um, you know, in some cases, short trips can impact you even worse than longer trips, depending on what your day looks like, when you left, how much sleep you got, things like that. So overall, from a ride perspective, the truck actually handles really, really well. It certainly has more of a firm suspension to it than a lot of the other trucks on the market, but it's coming across as very compliant. I've always told people that the, the Denali suspension to me feels almost like the BMW suspension of full-size pickup trucks. Whereas when you ride in a Ford or a Ram, sometimes they feel a little bit too floaty. They feel comfortable, they feel very compliant, but you know, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you. The suspension on this truck is firmer and a little bit more rough than I get from Ford and Ram, but it's more compliant, which means when you hit a bump, you don't bounce as much. It, it tackles bumps, it tackles imperfections in the road a little bit better, even though it does come across sometimes as a bit harsher. I think most people probably understand what I'm talking about when I say that and I give that comparison. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm super impressed with the MPGs on this truck. Like super, super impressed. This truck is just really, really exceeding my expectations from a fuel economy perspective. And let me show you something here. 
you look at the actual fuel tank reading, it's still 100% full. The range has actually still crept up, so it's 577 miles now, or it's essentially maintained, um, even though I've traveled 132.7 miles. Phenomenal. Anyways, still got a bit of a, a bit of a ways to go to get to my destination, and uh, we'll give you a final recap and wrap up of that. And then later on, whenever I head back into uh, Corpus Christi, I'll give you a total trip summary. Okay, so I am just getting to Brownsville, or at least the outskirts of Brownsville, an area called Rancho Viejo. And check this out. Just broke 30 miles per gallon for a trip average. Fuel economy average for the truck, 31.7, 145.9 miles. Um, actually, it's going to be like almost exactly 150 miles to where I'm going, but I'm going to meet a buddy of mine over at uh, Best Buy here real quick, or at least in the parking lot. And... Yeah, but just wanted to give you an update since I broke 30 miles per gallon. Okay, so I am here. There's Best Buy. And this is what the uh, trip looks like. 153.8 miles traveled. Average fuel economy for the trip, 29.7 miles per gallon. Duration, 2 hours and 18 minutes. Fuel economy for the uh, truck in general, 30.8. Check this out. Look at the range. 571 miles that means from the peak i think it was at the highest 577 is what it went up to from like 534 when i first took off 153.8 miles ago and it's again 570 miles now full tank hasn't dropped at all that is absolutely insane yeah the fuel economy on this truck just continues to surprise me just because, again, full-size truck, all the stuff that I've talked about before, I'm, I'm kind of like a broken record here talking about it, but the fact is, when you can get this type of fuel economy from a full-size truck, if all you need is a half-ton truck, and if you're not going to overload it with the trailer, if you're not going to be towing crazy heavy, you know, if you stay in that 6,000-pound range, I don't know what the towing fuel economy on this truck looks like, but if it is anywhere near as good from a percentage perspective as it is when it's unladen, that's going to be phenomenal. And what I mean by that is I understand there's going to be a huge drop in fuel economy when you start towing. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the fuel economy of this truck looks like. And if it's similar to heavy-duty pickup trucks in terms of the percentage drop, that's going to be pretty phenomenal. But only time's going to tell. And, you know, once I get the ability to hitch this thing up to one of the trailers and give you a really comprehensive towing evaluation, that's really where we're going to see the magic of uh, what this 3-liter straight-six diesel is able to produce from a fuel economy perspective while towing. Okay, so we're heading back, and I wanted to show you something that's very interesting and uh, yeah, definitely impacts fuel economy. I know a lot of people know wind, especially if you have a headwind, is going to severely cause your fuel economy numbers to go down and we currently have a 22 mile an hour headwind like literally directly coming straight at us and the fuel economy of the truck on the trip back has dropped tremendously and this wind has certainly put a hurting on the fuel economy numbers so 42.2 miles into our trip back 22.8 miles per gallon average for the truck 22.4 so yeah this is a it's pretty bad and it certainly brought the overall economy of this truck down whenever you're hitting wind that's coming onto you. Just kind of think about it from this perspective. If there was no wind at all, if the wind was just perfectly still and you're going 22 miles an hour and you put your hand out the window, you would feel quite a bit of wind. Well, the equivalent force of wind is now blowing against the truck, which is absolutely making the fuel economy numbers drop. But once we get back, we're gonna see what the uh, overall fuel economy looks like and hopefully uh, it'll still be pretty good. Okay, so we are just getting back to town now. 320.9 miles on the trip meter. 25.4 miles per gallon for the trip. Uh, fuel economy dropped, you know, quite a bit because of a headwind that we had. So anytime you have wind rushing towards you and you're essentially fighting against it, uh, your fuel economy is gonna drop. because It's gonna slow your vehicle down. It's gonna make your, your engine have to work harder to actually get up to the same amount of speed. So yeah, we're uh, we're seeing a pretty significant drop. In terms of fuel usage, the range has dropped also tremendously, 342 miles. So it took quite a bit off, again, mainly because of the headwind we had. 
So both trips that I've taken that I've documented here are seeing kind of the same results. The trip down, I got really, really great, phenomenal fuel economy results. And then on the way back, because of a headwind, and you might not be able to see it, but there's a flag right over there, and the wind is literally blowing directly at me. I think it's 22 mile an hour winds. Um, yeah, you can definitely see the, uh, the drop in fuel economy. Anyways, this has been another fun trip. Wow, this is a dangerous maneuver. In front of a semi-truck. Yeah, that's crazy. And another semi-truck and he's still passing people. This could turn into an entirely different type of video when people do that kind of stuff. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed me kind of documenting taking this truck on road trips to specifically see what the fuel economy looks like. Again, the only difference between the truck now versus the first time is the fact that I'm over a thousand miles on the odometer, so the break-in period is officially over, as well as uh, I have a tonneau cover on the back. So the tonneau cover is uh, gonna affect fuel economy one way or another. Some people think it helps, some people think it hurts. There's videos and TV shows to kind of show both sides of that, but you know, I don't really know what it did for me, to be honest with you, because it's very similar results, especially the trip back. Overall, though, the fuel economy on this trip has been a little bit better than it was last time. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.